school superhero movies. They're nothing new. It's kind of a trope that's been done many, many times before. It's just the basic idea of having a school for gifted people or people who have superpowers. And not only is it mainstream in Western culture, but even in anime, that's a pretty large common trope that happens. I mean, just look at My Hero Academia. That's one of the biggest animes around right now. And that anime is heavily influenced on Western type superheroes. And one famously known movie, uh, for, probably for people around my age, would be Sky High. And I know a lot of people mention that I should talk about Sky High and that I should review it, but, the funny thing about it is I was looking at Sky High. I was gonna make a video on it. But in my ventures of researching for Sky High, I stumbled upon a movie that I forgot about. And I guarantee you, a lot of you guys forgot about as well. It's a movie that is so bad, I consider it to be a bootleg cash grab off of Sky High itself because it was made a year after Sky High. I'm talking about a movie that has a top of the line cast. We're talking about Tim Allen, Courtney Cox, Chevy Chase, Spencer Breslin, Rip Torn, a movie with a budget of $75 million and only making $12 million. A movie that actually got a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes. A movie where Smash Mouth is the majority of the soundtrack. And probably the worst movie I have witnessed to this day zoom now a lot of people probably never saw this movie or even cared to watch it but i guarantee you that you saw the advertisement the trailer for this movie because i don't even think i watched it when i was younger but one thing that i vividly remember was spencer breslin's character jumping into a pool and his ass inflating to twice its size right when i saw that i knew oh boy this is gonna be a big old piece of shit, isn't it? I mean, it was a decently budgeted film. It had some top tier actors in it. It had some great advertising. The only thing the movie lacks is being a good movie. Uh, and one little problem about the trailer is uh, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen the whole movie. And no, that is not an exaggeration. I've watched this movie multiple times and I'm telling you right now, you watch the trailer, that's it. That's all that you need to know. Like there is literally nothing in this movie. There is so much wrong with this movie. It's going to be hard to fit in this video. Everything is choppy. About 75% of the scenes could get taken out and you would lose nothing. There is absolutely zero character development. After watching the movie the first time, I could not remember one of the characters names except Zoom because it's the title of the goddamn movie. And you guys think commentary channels like to stretch their videos to 10 minutes. Ooh boy. We're talking like 15 minutes of actual storyline and, and characters and actual things. And then the rest is a stretched out training montage. But anyway, I digress. Get your popcorn. Let's get into this god awful movie. So the movie starts out with some classic Smash Mouth and the generic trope of a comic book opening. And within the first minute, they drop this giant setting onto us and it just makes no sense. So basically, there's a team of superheroes that fight crime together. And for some weird reason, they just weren't strong enough. So they ended up shooting them with something called Gamma 13 in order to make them stronger. But for some reason, the Gamma 13 made one of the team members concussion go to the dark side. No, I'm not joking. That's actually what they say. Then he ends up killing their team. So Zoom runs around him really fast and somehow that sends concussion to a different dimension. Oh, and also uh, it made Zoom lose his powers i guess running around in a circle just makes your powers disappear and also opens dimensions within the first minute of the movie it already doesn't make sense and it only goes downhill just so everyone knows um you might want to like turn off your brain maybe shove a piece of glass in your frontal lobe just turn off your brain because nothing will make sense. So right after we get that stupid setup dumped on us, the conflict of the movie kind of just gets lazily thrown in your face. We've been tracking a pan-dimensional anomaly that seems to be moving toward our time-space continuum. Dr. Grant, I speak Greek, not geek. God, because he's a nerd. Because he, he's smart. Freaking geek? Give him a wedgie while you're at it. Okay, so they said he was sent to a different dimension and he's coming back from that dimension. So why is there a map that says he's coming from Long Beach, California? Back. He was destroyed. Nope. We were there. We both saw it. Nope. 
every actor in this movie just looks like they don't give a shit. So they end up going to search for the legendary Zoom, who is of course played by the wonderful Tim Allen. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, I get it. Because he's Zoom and he has super speed and it's called Slow Jacks because it's the opposite of fast is slow. I I saw it. I, I see I see you. I see you, movie. Stupid piece of sh Jack? What what are you doing with that finger? Put it down, Jack. No! No! Oh, oh god! Stop! Stop! Oh thank god, he's distracted by a random girl in a green dress that he's just pervertedly staring at. There's a car coming, lady. So the lady just really awkwardly falls in the street, and so Jack goes over and takes her back to his lair to use his vibrating finger on her. Oh, oh. Come on, get out. Grant? Hello, Zoom. It's Jack. So they use the green dress lady to act like she fell down so they can just pull up and talk to him? Why didn't you just pull up and talk to him? What was the whole point of the green dress lady? Like they were acting like they were trying to pull him out so they can capture him, but they end up just going up and talking to him. It, it just, there's no reason for that. They end up telling Jack that he needs to teach other kids how to use their superpowers in order to stop concussion. But for some weird reason, they don't ever tell Jack what the conflict is or who the bad guy is they kind of just say hey we'll give you five hundred thousand dollars if you teach these kids and he's like okay it would make for such a more interesting storyline if they told him so now we get to meet the kids who are just extremely boring and apparently like using their powers in the open and no one really reacts a little girl throws a kid into a tree oh you stop throwing kids into trees stop it freak <laughs> Teenager makes food explode on cheerleaders bullying her. Chad makes sick joke. Perhaps you'd like to come up and finish Newton's equation? I think Newton can finish his own equation. <laughs> and then goes poof in front of everyone in class. And fat kid buddy, fat kid go boom boom. Fat, fat boy, ha ha, stinky, big booty, boom boom, ha, fat boy. So something I hate about characters, when people make characters, and they're just one dimensional. Like every time that character's on screen, they just have a quirk about them and they just shove that quirk down your face. Like Miss Halloway, she falls down every time she walks into a scene. Or Fat Kid, he's always eating food. Or Little Girl, she's always wearing a different outfit because she wants to be a princess. Like every character is just one dimensional. There's no depth to them, they're just that. And also throughout the film, Tim Allen's character is just, extremely creepy when it comes to talking to Miss Halloway. Like, he's just like, pervertedly creepy the whole time. Why is the green dress talking? Uh, Miss Halloway is our leading researcher in the area of latent superhuman ability. That's creepy. But do you still have that green dress? How about that green dress? Still have that? Show of hands. Who here does not live with their mom in her basement? <laughs> I, I think we did it. We finally found the worst possible joke. I'm gonna hang that up on a wall. Okay, I, I, I really just can't believe it. We did it. After all these years, we finally found the worst possible joke. Thanks, Tim Allen. Okay, look, I know the fat kid trope was kind of big in the early 2000s, but did they really have to put him in a fat suit and uh, make him eat candy like every second possible? And the sad part is, it's not even a good fat suit. Like, they just put a pillow underneath his shirt. I mean, I mean, look at this. Look, isn't this like the same shit? Look, like this. Uh, uh, uh. So they end up gathering a bunch of children who have powers and select the ones they think have potential. But it's actually just four kids who really have powers and then the rest are just funny ha ha look at me type things. Like ha 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 she blinks fast. Ha 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 boogers. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, fart stinky. Oh fart poopy. Ah, yeah, poopy. Yeah. This entire scene is pointless. And just a little side note about this scene. Um, Why is it only the white kids were the one who got selected like it could just be a coincidence but every single person who got denied were of a different race except white look 
you know, this could be me reading further into things than I need to, but it's a little bit weird that only the white kids got selected. Oh dear God, burn it! Burn it now! That is getting so old. Well, considering you can read my mind, I don't have many options. I can't read your mind, I just feel stuff. And you could stop hitting on me entirely. No, I, I can't do that. You and I are destiny. Who are these people? I've seen them a total of one minute in this movie. Did I miss something? This movie's acting like I know these two, like I know their backstory, and they've had a back and forth flirty relationship for a while. I've just met you two. Who are you? So anyway, Tim Allen's character just doesn't want to teach the kids uh, because he just thinks they're not strong enough or something. I would like to formally introduce you to a very great man, Mr. Jack Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> so Miss Halloway tells all the kids that Tim Allen is actually Santa Claus. Faster than Quicksilver, The Flash, and Superman, all together. Really? 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 No way. Way. But then he proceeds to just be a dick to the children. Is like, hey, superheroes aren't real. I'm not real. Because I'm not a superhero. There's no such thing as superheroes. No matter what people told you around here, you're not superheroes. We're superheroes. You're definitely white kids, I'll tell you that. Is it? Is there like a, is there like a ringing in my ear? I, what even was the point of making that comment? This just makes them picking only white kids a lot weirder. Wow, you noticed. Would you believe that little girl is holding- See what I mean about the little bit of a weird perverted thing going on? Now we get the first of many Smash Mouth montages. And just telling you now, there are many, many Smash Mouth montages. And another thing I don't get about this movie is Jack always says he doesn't want to train them. He's not going to train them. But throughout the movie, they're all getting trained. I mean, maybe they're getting trained by like the company, the government company that, that's there. But it doesn't make sense because he's always there watching them train. You know, there's not really a, 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 there's no sense being made. There's no sense being made. Where am I? <laughs> what is she laughing at? The there's no back and forth. I don't even have a connection to his character yet. Who are you? I don't even know her name. He's escaped again. Uh, security code, Dylan. I repeat, code Dylan. What do you mean again? Isn't this like their first day? This entire movie just plays montages and expects you to just get what happens in those montages. Like there's a bunch of character development in the montage, but they just skip over it and expect us to know what happened. He's a lazy little chubba bubba. Yeah, fat kid eating. I uh, make fun of cause fat he getting angry. <laughs> then Tim Allen proceeds to be a dick again and tells Miss Holloway that comic books aren't real. Superheroes aren't real. I'm a dick for no goddamn reason because it's never explained. <laughs> Why are they playing baseball? How did we get here? What what led to this point? They're acting like they're best friends and I don't even know who they are. Why are they playing baseball? Why? I don't know anything about Jack or Zoom. I don't know anything about the four kids who are training and they're just, we're 25 minutes in. We're 25 minutes in, and I don't even remember their names. Who are they? What's their backstory? What are they doing here? So now we have a forced father figure weird thing going on where the six-year-old acts like Tim Allen's her dad. Is that you, Mr. Pibb? Hey, you recognize me? How you doing, buddy? Give me five. <laughs> oh yeah, we're meeting this robot for the first time, even though we saw him two scenes ago. In the baseball area where they were playing baseball, the robot was there. You have already seen the robot in context of this movie. They just didn't give a shit, did they? I am convinced that they were writing this movie as they were recording because nothing lines up. We didn't have any friends down here, so they built us one. You go get your candy and sodas, that sort of thing. Mr. Pibb, is that old Rambler still down in the hangar? Yeah. Got the keys? 
so this robot, Mr. Pib, was just made so uh, Jack could have a friend when he was in there alone as a kid. But for some reason, he has the keys to a high security UFO. Whoa. Oh yeah, yeah, you're, oh, wow, spaceship, we're seeing it all for the first time, even though when you were playing baseball, it was in the same room as the UFO. You've already seen the UFO in context of the film. <laughs> Oh yes, just yoink a highly classified, highly guarded UFO spaceship. Just yoink it, take it, go ahead. So not only do they steal the UFO, the fat kid, because he's fat, goo, you poopy, poopy fat. He's hungry, so his option is sucking up a cow. Barbecue, to go. Tucker, put the cow back. I'm hungry. Tucker. All right. Just so they could throw in a basic UFO cliche of sucking up a cow. New worst joke. We found the new worst joke. I'm writing it down. Sorry, mom's basement sucking a cow. New worst joke. Now, just when you think this scene of the UFO couldn't get any dumber, couldn't get any worse, there is a five minute long Wendy's product placement. They go to the drive thru and then all of them just start talking over each other. Lettuce, Johnny. tomato, and cheese. Classic triple lettuce, tomato. I got uh, six Frosties. Six yeah. Frosties. Yeah. Chocolate. All right, now what's everyone else drinking? Get it? Because he's fucking fat! Oh my god! Give me the fucking paper! I'm I'm writing down right he's fat! He's fat! Funny, funny! I'm laughing right now! So a highly classified UFO gets stolen, gets yoinked, right? And you want to know how Mrs. Halloway finds out about them stealing it? Oh what, you think they're security guarding it? Or you think they have an alert system when a UFO gets stolen out of their facility? No. She happens to walk by a screen that is casting the news, and the news just so happens to be interviewing the Wendy's employee who says he saw a UFO. That's how she finds out. Literally no one in the entire facility even doesn't even have an inkling that their UFO's gone. What kind of highly classified government facility are you running? You even know what you've done? Yeah, yeah. I got you a hot chicken sandwich. No, thank you. Was I gallivanting? <sighs> Looks like the sauce was not the only thing stuck in the 50s. You're probably 50. What even is this dialogue? So then there's another creepy, awkwardly forced scene of the little girl having a nightmare and then sleeping next to Jack. <laughs> which I don't get because we're three-fourths of the way done with the movie. I still don't know who this little girl is. I don't know her backstory. I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about her. I cannot form a connection, this awkward connection with her and Tim Allen, if I don't know them. Why did her parents drop her off at a government facility? Why is she acting like Tim Allen's her dad? They barely even know each other. There's no character development. Welcome to our fully operational multi-platform J-1000 mission simulator. It is imperative that you learn to avoid enemy fire. Finally, we get some actual training without going through a montage. So their version of training for kids with superpowers is not, you know, working on their individual superpowers to get better. They put them in a room where there are paintball guns completely surrounding them, thousands of paintball guns, and they want them to dodge it. It doesn't make any sense. Children, your goal is to stop the simulator by pressing that red button in the center. Oh, well all he has to do is press the button. How long can that be? I don't know. What happened? Did he just not press the button? His arm was on a downswing. What? Did he miss? Did he miss the button? Did a paintball get lodged in his frontal lobe and now he can't use his arms? Oh, great! Another training montage, just in time. 
I'm sorry. I, I I don't like you guys seeing me like this. I don't I don't enjoy being like this. You know. Oh boy, better put on your 3D glasses. Oh whoa. No, you didn't drop us off here, but you're supposed to teach us. Thanks for all the training, Captain. You don't care about us. So after another Smash Mouth montage, they all of a sudden get mad at Jack because he isn't training them even though they're all getting trained? What was the training montages for? There were multiple of them. Are they not getting trained? Just because Tim Allen's character isn't giving him motivational quotes? So after they storm off for some unknown reason, the Chad character's in jail. Even though he was in the training montage, he's just chilling in jail. I'm so confused. So after an epic superhero logo transition, we get introduced to yet another completely pointless scene that lasts way too long. So the three kids, fat, brain, and small, are sneaking around the government facility, which, um, why? And they happen to stumble upon an outdoor survival simulator. Now, my first time watching this, I was already confused. I thought they were just gonna go in there and do a little bit of extra training or, I don't know. But for no goddamn reason, Dr. Grant, who is inside the facility, they just lock him in there and proceed to uh, bully him basically by pressing all the different weather buttons, which just look like they just put a sticker on a piece of metal. And then they end up spraying him in the face with a skunk with the most stereotypical generic Western thing. I don't know, man. I don't know, Chevy Chase. Maybe move. Like the skunk was sitting there. He saw it come up. Move. To encourage your talents naturally. Dylan, I'm talking to you. Where do you go when you fuzz out like that? What do you mean, where does he go? He's just spacing out. What do you mean? This is the first time this has happened. Just because he spaced out for a second, the movie's acting like this is a reoccurring thing he does. Yeah, this is the first time he's doing it. This movie's acting like I know what they were doing or, or I know the backstory of them, but like I'm missing an entire movie's worth of backstory. You don't perchance get a little headache over your eye when you do that, do you? So uh, let me give you a little rundown of what happened in this scene so you can truly understand how ridiculous this actually is. Dylan spaces out. Uh, Jack, for no reason, asked Dylan, Hey, do you do you ever get like a a headache above your eyebrow? Then Jack tells Dylan to um spy on Summer. And so Dylan uses a random power that I guess he has out of nowhere to scoot his way with his mind vision and spy on Summer. What if she was naked? What if she was in the shower? This is weird. And then Jack tells Dylan he is officially the new team leader. This is a real gift. It's called Mindsight. These kids are gonna need a leader. This team needs one. And a leader is someone who can see the way. I think that may be you. When were they even a team? Wh who is he? Who's Dylan? What does he do? He turns invisible. Wh how? Why can he see? far away it doesn't make any sense so anyway dylan and jack talk some more like some some bro talk you know even though i still don't know their characters at all and dylan finds out that the bad guy that killed jack's team was actually jack's brother connor who was actually concussion we are 50 minutes into the movie let that sink in we're 50 minutes in does anybody watching this video right now do you know what's going on see a lot of you watching are thinking that i'm like summarizing this movie or cutting it down cutting out the meaty portions of the movie no i'm showing you the meaty portions i'm showing you the only portions that have any sense of anything i am saving you an hour and 30 minutes of your life subscribe to me please almost done with the movie and the only story progression we have gotten so far a reiteration of the very beginning setting that is the only story we've gotten so far he was your friend and he you don't know what you're talking about okay concussion was your brother so Jack gets sad after remembering his brother and stares at a wall while Superman plays in the background and guess what guys Guess what happens next? All of a sudden, 
Jack wants to teach the kids. 55 minutes have gone by and there has been zero development of Jack's character. You know, you would think he would like gradually warm up to the kids, you know, like him, be like, you know what, maybe I should teach these kids after a while. Nope. The only thing that happens is zero character development, and all of a sudden, Dylan mentions Jack's brother, and then he's like, oh, I'm listening to Superman. I'm all sad. I'm going to stare at a wall. Now I want to freaking teach these kids. An entire movie of character development dumbed down to five seconds, and somehow the movie gets worse. Most no. importantly, I want to deal with the fundamentals. No. So there's two fundamentals. Control. Don't you dare, Tim yeah, Allen. Think about it. Control. Don't you dare, Tim Allen. Stop it right on, there. Follow me. Not another goddamn training montage. I, ah! And it doesn't make any sense because they're doing the exact same training exercises. Like, what changed? What did Jack do to make them change? I, I, they're the same exercises. The only difference is that they're doing better than before. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Add a little bit of awkward romance here and there. Oh, scratch that. Two of them. Add two forced romance scenes. I, I don't even know who I am anymore. Well, if Zoom still had his powers, his speed could create a mega vortex, which would trap concussion and reverse the dark effects of the gamma radiation. Oh, yes. Running really fast around a bad person makes him good. It makes perfect sense. So Summer randomly walks into Marsha's, I guess, like little apartment thing, and she asks her for something to wear. Now, my first time watching this, I was confused. I, I, I don't know why she wants something to wear or what she's doing. I was just thinking, oh, you know, maybe she just wanted some comfortable clothes. Nope, it's for a fucking high school dance. An actual dance because they completed their course? What course did they complete? What did they gain? What was their goal? What did they get better at? Why are they having a high school dance to celebrate? I feel like they're just adding any type of trope for a school to make sure that they show that it's an academy for superheroes because in the title, it says Zoom Academy for superheroes. Even though this is a government facility, it's not an academy. It doesn't make any sense. But once again, movie's almost over, so they're trying to shove as much romance they can before the movie's over. But uh-oh, big military guy comes in and crashes the party. Boy, for a straight guy, you're dramatic. Oh, oh, there it is again. There's that ringing. I keep getting like, like a ringing in my ear. It, did he say that? For a straight guy, you're dramatic. That's... I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm hearing it right. The mean military guy doesn't think the kids are strong enough, so he's going to shoot them with a Gamma 13 crap. God, I just, I just don't care. I just don't care. So Jack ends up breaking him out and takes them to a hidden room so they can stay safe from the Gamma 13. And then he gives them all superhero names, which that's just kind of an afterthought. No one really cares. Then Dylan, for some reason, like falls down and uses his mind's eye, which doesn't make any sense because earlier, he could apparently completely control it, but now it's just like, whoa, my mind's eye, whoa, it's working all of a sudden. With Dylan's mind's eye, they find out that uh, they're actually going to face Jack's brother and he's the bad guy. And the only reason they didn't tell Jack is because he didn't need to know. We didn't tell you about Connor because you didn't need to know. Jail, and then for no reason they put Jack in jail, which, why? Like, you would think that they need everybody to fight the bad guy, but now that he knows who the bad guy is, they don't want him there? I Why are they back in their rooms? What was the point of hiding them and telling them to stay put so they don't get caught? They went straight back to their rooms and the guards just came in and be like, oh, let's go, let's go. These children are idiots. So now Marsha can blow. I mean, that's something, I guess. Man, that is so hot. So they get Jack out of jail and they yoink the UFO. And after this huge buildup of concussion, he's literally the worst bad guy ever. He's so anticlimactic. He's not strong. He's just a weak little bitch. Nobody wants to fight you. I just want to talk. <laughs> This is even better than I expected. This is better than you expected? Then what was the point of keeping him in the dark? Why did you put him in jail? 
Just send them out. I, uh, brain brain collapsing. Anyway, all the kids come to help out Jack. Concussion throws back a giant net that the army tried to use to capture him. And oh no, it's going to hit Sandy. But Tim Allen vibrates. Damn, if his whole body vibrates. Pff, just imagine how Martha's going to feel later. You know what I'm saying? I'm slowly losing my mind. Cindy, you're safe now. You're okay, it's me, it's Jack. Please, Cindy, don't do this to me. You're all right, come on, princess. He really seems like he is worried that she is dead. Cindy, don't do this to me. Cindy, ah, Cindy, don't, don't do this to me, Cindy. <laughs> wow, Concussion's really good at attacking right next to people. But before Jack can help anyone, he has to make sure to go get his super suit. <laughs> Why did they make it like that? Why, why did they cut it like that? That was awful. Let's play ball. Yeah, guys, it's time to play ball. Remember like we did in that scene that made no sense and it only lasted 20 seconds and literally didn't line up with anything else that happened in the movie? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a callback to a scene that made no sense. Hey, concussion. Just blow all the rocks away. Do your concussion thing. What in the hell is this little jab? He should be able to wipe the floor with these people. Just knock them away. Like what? what is what is this? So they bounce around concussion and then he starts flying towards Cindy and then Cindy plays ball and hits him away. But oh no, he's gonna miss. But thank God Martha can blow. And then Zoom runs around him really fast and for some reason that makes him a good guy now. Must save Connor. He ran around away from him and then everyone threw him in there. Why didn't he just run around him in the first place? You know, there's a quadrillion plot holes in this, but all right. So now Connor's a good guy and they live happily ever after. So Tim Allen made Connor a good guy and they all live happily ever after. Except me. Who had to suffer through it. But once again, I will say this. Um, by far the worst film I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Um, displeasing, displeasurable, awful. With all of these tools they had to work with. Great actors. Decent budget. Uh great advertisement the atrocity that came from that i'm just gonna lay down sit in silence for a while maybe even weeks i'm not sure but uh thank you everyone for watching this video please make sure to subscribe like the video follow me on twitter on instagram all the socials um i'm i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go Bye, everyone.